The desert is full of unusual creatures, and sometimes you have to resort to unusual methods to get up close and personal with them. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and this secret world has fascinated me for years. All around us, some of the most bizarre creatures are living out their lives, oftentimes without us even knowing. And the Sonoran Desert is no exception. Today, I'm on the hunt for giant spiders. These gargantuan arachnids are some of my favorite creatures to see in the wild. And here in Arizona, they're almost entirely nocturnal. So we're heading out after dark and hiking the desert washes. But tarantulas are not the only thing that goes bump in the night out here. And as the sun sinks below the horizon, one of my friends calls out that he's got something very special underneath a rock. <laughs> there it is. They're fast, dude. All right, wait, wait, wait. That's manageable. Yeah. I'm trying not to hurt him. There you go. There we go. Okay. All right, container. Yeah. <laughs> They're so quick. Have a look at this little guy. These are probably one of my favorite little arachnids you can possibly find. This is a little whip scorpion. And little is accurate. These guys do not get very big out here in Arizona, but look at how cool they look. This is probably one of the most ancient arachnids you could possibly find. And they have not changed a whole lot in hundreds of millions of years. And they have conquered the tropics and neotropics and have found their way into the deserts of Arizona. How weird. Generally speaking, tarantulas, scorpions, stuff like that. Here in the US, we associate them with desert environments, but they're actually, generally speaking, much more tropical creatures. Just like a lot of those tropical animals, it is really, really weird. And its appearance can actually give us clues about its biology. See, the whip scorpions, they're not like spiders or regular scorpions, they're not venomous. They actually hunt their prey using these little whips right here. Those are actually modified legs, we call antennae form legs. And the reason we call it that is they actually serve kind of like this animal's antennae, where insects actually have them coming, coming out of their head. There are a lot of arachnid species that basically sacrifice one pair of legs to have sensors. The whip scorpion is not a very visual predator. They're highly nocturnal coming out under the pitch black cover of darkness. And as a result, they have tiny, tiny little eyes. And it's these sensory legs that they actually use to understand their world. You can see he's carefully sweeping them around gathering data about his surroundings. And as you saw when we were trying to catch this little guy, they are fast. You know, he's calmed down, but if you wanted to, he probably could give you a pretty good pinch with those front claws, but they're not aggressive. Just a really weird nocturnal creature that we absolutely love to see. But we're gonna go ahead and let this guy go and get back out in this wash. When you're exploring the desert, you have to be really thorough. It might not sound like a super biodiverse place, but trust me, there's a lot of life going on here, especially during the rainy season. Torrential downpours flush all sorts of really interesting life forms out of their hidden burrows, making them a lot easier for a scientist like me to actually get out and observe. And while we're out here looking for spiders, not all of the desert residents are extremely creepy. Some of them might even be adorable. Check this out right here. That is a little banded gecko. Hi, buddy. How fast are they? I don't think they're very fast. Okay. I am usually pretty terrible at catching lizards, but oh, okay, yeah, he's not fast. Hi, bud. Come here. I don't want to hurt him. He's really, oh, jeez. Hi, 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 you're okay. You're okay. They're really fragile, so I'll be careful here. Hi, buddy. So soft. Hi. This is a little banded gecko. Now, this is not at all what we're looking for out here, but it's really nice to see things start to move. Once the sun goes down and the heat starts to break a little bit, all the cool desert creatures start to come out. And look at how adorable this one is. The stuff we're looking for is a lot more sinister, menacing, and even creepy than he is. Probably asking Spencer, this looks kind of like a leopard gecko. Are they related? And yeah, they're sort of related. These guys are actually also kept pretty frequently in the pet trade. But one thing I'll say right here is, if you see a lizard in the wild, just leave it back in the wild because they don't belong. They don't belong indoors. They belong out here where they can eat bugs and live their lives. That's what we're gonna let him go back and do. But really nice to see an amazing little reptile moving. It's early in the night, so if stuff is starting to move this early, it should be productive. 
What a great find. I definitely don't feature enough lizards here on the channel, that's for sure. We didn't need to hike long before we found our first tarantula. However, this is where it got challenging. She actually darted down her burrow, which means we needed to use some state-of-the-art technology to coax her out. I'm gonna put him down. I'm sorry, and I still had you. Actually, I'm doing a walker. Yeah, watch how much the ground eats the water. I need some of that water. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. Oh. Got him. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a bit small. Yeah, It'll work. Oh, he's a small enough yeah. tarantula. Yeah, he's not that big. He needs some. He needs to get some weight. Right? Yes, absolutely. We're gonna contain him for now, though. I might have a. No, this is this one. Perfect. I have a look at this right here. That was one heck of a catch. She was coming out of her burrow, and then we startled her, and we had to flush her right back out. Water has been really, really helpful tonight. Those monsoons came through, and all kinds of life comes out. Our first night here in Arizona, we saw very, very little, but a little bit of weather, desert comes alive, and these tarantulas are a perfect example of that life. All of these guys are gonna be hiding in burrows, for most of the time. So dry, it's so hot, and resources are so scarce, it really doesn't make sense for most of these animals to move. Under cover of darkness, once it starts to rain, you start to see all these creepy creatures start to come out. Now these tarantulas are one of the more, in my opinion, cute things that we can see under cover of darkness. They're fuzzy, they're slow, really inoffensive animals. And these females like this are probably some of the most special arachnids we could possibly be seen. They are among the longest lived terrestrial arthropods, not just spiders, not just arachnids, arthropods in the world. Female New World tarantulas can live decades. I have no idea how old this spider is, but she is pretty small, so I would imagine that she's probably not on the older side. I absolutely love seeing these creatures in the wild. It's just, it is just breathtaking. This is actually a desert blonde tarantula, which is one of the most iconic species in the US, especially in Arizona, a true icon of the American West. We've seen rattlesnakes and the Western Diamondback and this spider right here are really big heritage animals of American natural history and a true treat to see in the wild. This is not something we need to be fearing, not something we need to be too worried about, but honestly, an animal that we really should just, when we see in the wild, we should just appreciate it because these guys are beautiful. These guys are awesome. Tarantulas and other giant spiders never really get boring to see out in the wild. And I love bringing you along on fun little adventures like this where you kind of just find a bunch of random crazy creatures. I've seen your comments. I know that this is something that you've been asking for and I'm so excited to be able to share them with you. However, if you'd like to participate in more of these kinds of adventures, but in real time, and even see sneak peeks for future adventures that are gonna be coming out here on the channel, I've got just a thing for you. I've launched a Discord server for the My Wild Backyard YouTube channel. You can come hang out with me, other fans, chat about wildlife, see updates on my adventures and where I'm actively exploring, and even share your adventures and the crazy animals you're finding in the secret world. It's totally free. You can do it on your desktop, laptop, or your phone. And it's a really fun community with lots of really awesome people. And I can't wait to hang out with you there. So if you're interested, click this link right here. And as always, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.